Good morning all. This here is the Advanced Motion Controls Servo Drive and its model is B25A20Q. Now, uh, on this drive the motor shorted out and wiped out a couple of these power MOSFETs. Their part number is IRF P260 N made by International Rectifier. I'll show you in a second which ones had uh, had give up the ghost. But when whenever that happens, um, I like to change all six because these four over here they're good with my meter, but they were stressed when these two over here exploded. And, of course, every time when one or two of these MOSFETs, maybe all of them, go bad, the short circuit energy shoots back up through the gate and wipes out a couple of firing channels. So, I had to replace a 4.99 ohm resistor right here. It opened up when that short circuit energy drew too much current through that resistor and opened it up. It's a little surface mount one. I don't know if you can see it right there, but it's very, very tiny. So I replaced it with a 1 8 watt 4.99 ohm resistor right here. And also, it damaged this driver I see right here, so I had to replace that. Let's take a look at the power MOSFETs. I grab my meter right here. We'll check these MOSFETs right here. I'll show you the two that are shorted. Get my meter turned on. Turn that light on so you can see. This one right here, you can see the damage in it where it blew out. And gate to drain is shorted and dig through that solder and gate to source is shorted and drain to source is shorted <laughs> definitely bad right there here's the other bad one there's gate to drain gate to source and drained the source shorted all the way through. Those two are shorted all the way through. Now, I like to, when I have a short circuit event like that, I like to change all the power devices because with these, when these two go down, they stress the other four. So I like to change all six. It's a good, good practice to do that. Now let's go over there and check our repair work on the control board. Okay, I'm behind the camera, so I'm going to try and uh, explain. So that's what we're going to do for testing that board. Now pin one is plus 10. Pin 2 is signal ground, and pin 3 is negative 10 volts. Now that's for your potentiometer that uh, you're going to use to make the speed reference in on pin 4 and pin 5. Now what I do is I tie reference uh, the negative reference in pin 5 back up to signal ground. Then I'll take 1 and 3 over to the uh, wings of the potentiometer and take the wiper into pin 4. That'll be our speed reference. Let's go down here to the Hall effects. Now, I don't have the servo motor that runs on this drive. Usually when you get something in the shop, you won't get the motor. You won't get the cables. So we have to simulate uh, 
the Hall Effect input and I invented a Hall Effect encoder simulator and I'm going to take the Hall Effect output of my invention and run it into Hall Effect 1, Hall Effect 2, and Hall Effect 3 on pins 12, 13, and 14. And my simulator, uh, its ground will be tied to pin 11. And after we do that, we'll be able to look at the gate source firing on that board without the new power MOSFETs installed. I have got to do that to ensure that the gate source firing signals are correct. If I don't do that and I install those power MOSFETs, the IRFP260Ns, into the circuit and there's a problem with the gate firing and one of those gates is always on and the other one swings around into play, boom! I just destroyed two MOSFETs, or three or four, depending on how many uh, uh, gate firing signals are incorrect or not present. So, if you can, it's always best to check that before you install the motor power devices. So, let's go over and do that. Here's the setup to test the control board of the servo drive uh, without the new MOSFETs installed. Over here I got a Variac bridge rectifier bus caps that make 90 volts DC that I'm putting in to pins 1 and 2 of this terminal board right here. I've got my Hall Effect encoder simulator into the Hall Effect inputs of the control board and I've got a speed pot over here going into the speed reference input of the control board. Okay, I'm going to program a Hall Effect encoder simulator for Hall Effect output. turn on the 90 volts DC. You can see this LED right here on the control board has gone green. If you don't have the Hall Effect inputs, that will come up red. Now we're going to go ahead and enable the output of my simulator into the control board. With our Fluke oscilloscope, we're going to get on the gate and source vias of the control board and make sure that everybody is firing correctly. Okay, those three are good. That's good. Fifth one is good. The sixth one is good. Look at that. Okay. There's the first one. Here's the second gate source. That looks good. Here's the third gate source. That looks good. Okay. Over to the other side, the fourth gate source, that's good, here's the fifth, good, and the sixth, the last one, that looks good. We're ready to install those power MOSFETs because all of our gate source Firing signals look good.
we are looking at motor phase A in relationship to motor phase C. Let's look at motor phase A in relationship to motor phase B. between motor phase B and motor phase C. And that looks good. Okay, here's a close-up of the oscilloscope of motor phase A and motor phase B. motor phase A to motor phase C. Here's motor phase B to motor phase C. They all look good. Good high side and low side firing. That's what you want to see in this servo drive. Look at the DC bus. There we go. 94, 93.9 volts DC. Nice and smooth. That looks good. All right. Looks like we had a successful repair. All I got to do now is put the lid on it. <laughs> All right, folks. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.